Welcome to today's video lecture where we're going to discuss lipids, one of the four organic compounds. We're going to talk about the properties of lipids, the structure of the lipids, the function of the lipids, and finally then we're going to discuss the different types of lipids because there are multiple different types. So let's get started. First of all, the properties of lipids. Now, lipids are what are considered a non-polar substance. Water is a polar substance, and we've talked about that before. So what's going to happen is when you mix lipids and water, they're not going to mix, okay? So lipids will not dissolve in water, and if you remember real quick, you can see on here, we have our oxygen, N, which is slightly negative. It hogs all those electrons. We have our hydrogen side, which is slightly positive. It doesn't hold on to those electrons as tight as the oxygen side does, so it becomes a polar molecule. And because it's a polar molecule, it doesn't want to dissolve nonpolar. So lipids will not dissolve in water because they are nonpolar. Okay? Because of this, those lipids form clumps in the water. Okay? So what you're going to end up seeing is if you try to mix oil and water, you will end up with clumps of oil that will then all try to collect together and then you'll end up with the full separation of oil and water. Lipids also have a large number of carbon-hydrogen bonds. Okay? If you look here, we have a string of carbon atoms. With those string of carbon atoms, we actually have hydrogens all the way around it. Remember, carbon wants to make four bonds. So what it's doing here is forming hydrogens all the way around. This is a major characteristic of the lipids, and you'll see that when we start looking at the structure. Because of this, because of the large number of carbon and hydrogen bonds, what you'll notice is that it stores a lot of energy, which is one of its functions, but that energy is hard to access, which is one of the reasons why we're able to store all that energy in our body as fat but then we can't burn it off as easily once we actually store it in our bodies. Okay, so those are some of the major properties of water. So let's look at the structure. We were just talking about the long carbon-hydrogen chains. So, lipids have carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen in them. Just the same as carbohydrates have. The major difference is there's actually no ratio. In fact, you're going to see very few oxygen in a lipid. Okay? What you're going to see is you're going to see large numbers of carbons, large numbers of hydrogens, and very few, probably under five, um, but very few oxygens. So you're not going to have that two to one hydrogen to oxygen ratio that you see in carbohydrates. So carbon, hydrogen, and oxygen, but there's no ratio. For the most part, we have large or long carbon chains with what's called a carboxyl group at the top. Okay? Our carboxyl group over here is a COOH, is what you refer to it as. COOH. So we refer to it as um, a carboxyl group. So that's going to be at one end. Now that is polar. That side of this molecule is polar, which means it's going to actually like the water. And we refer to that as hydrophilic. Okay? Water loving. Hydro, water, philic means loving. So hydrophilic and it's polar, but that's the only part of this which is polar. Okay? The other long side is nonpolar. These are long carbon chains, no oxygen in them, okay? Lots of hydrogen in them, okay? And these are hydrophobic. Water fearing. Okay? They do not mix with water very easily at all. They, in fact, they won't mix with water. And so this is the part that we refer to as being nonpolar and not mixing with the water. Now, what you'll end up with is you'll end up with these long chains that either have single bonds of carbon with them, and then as many hydrogens as can fit around will. This is what's considered a saturated fat. Okay? Every single spot that a hydrogen could be filling in, it's filled. So it is fully saturated with hydrogens. 
In this other picture over here, you'll notice we have a couple of double bonded carbons. So right here we have a double bond between the carbons. The carbons are sharing two electrons instead of just the one each. So with that, what's going to happen is we don't have an extra hydrogen off to this side because the carbon doesn't need another bond. It has its four. This one also. This one is sharing double bonded carbon here and a double bonded carbon here. So it actually has no hydrogens attached to it. Okay unsaturated means it doesn't have as many hydrogens as possible bonded to it. So, in taking a look at this, this is considered unsaturated because if we broke this double bond, we could add two more carbons. If we broke this double bond, we could add two more carbons. And if we broke this double bond, we could also add two more carbons. So it's unsaturated. It is not filled with as many hydrogens as it possibly could. All right, so now on to, on to the function. We talked about energy storage. In fact, we refer to energy as calories. Fats store nine calories per gram. Okay, so per gram, fats have nine calories in them. Whereas carbohydrates only have four grams, but it's more easily accessible. So that's why our carbohydrates are energy for us to actually use whereas the fats are, the, are where our energy is stored. When we don't burn off that energy that we eat, all that extra energy we eat, if we don't burn it off, it gets stored in our bodies as fats, okay? And so it's energy storage. It also helps to, lipids also help to provide waterproofing, okay? Think about why people wax their cars, because the wax, the water rolls right off the car and you don't end up with the little droplets of water on there. So they help provide waterproofing. Water's not going to get through. Water's not going to get into it. Protective coating's kind of in the same area of that. Okay? Plants have a protective coating on the outside of them called a cuticle, and those are waxy substances. Okay? So they're waterproofing and protective coatings. The last piece is that steroids are lipids. Okay, steroids also fit into the lipids category. And the steroids are a little bit different than everything else, and we're gonna talk about that in a little bit, but they are your hormones, for instance, testosterone in males, estrogen in females, um, and any other hormones that we have in our body. Those are steroids. Cholesterol is also a steroid. There's good cholesterol, there's bad cholesterol, and if you have too much of it, it can be a bad thing, but we do need some in our bodies. So, they actually help with our cell membrane, okay, the structure in the cell membrane, and they also help with some communication between cells. Okay, nerve cells in particular cannot function without cholesterol. So finally, we're gonna reach the different types of um, lipids. So let's talk about that. We have two different categories. We have our fatty acids, and then we have our steroids. So. Our fatty acids um, actually fit, break down into three different categories also. So let's talk about those three categories. Our fatty acid of triglycerides. The prefix tri means three, and glycer glyceride is referring to what's called a glycerol molecule. So we have three fatty acid chains and a glycerol molecule that make up our um, triglycerides. Up here I have the glycerol in pink, okay? And normally, down off of here, the glycerol is going to have an OH molecule if it's sitting by itself. Remember, OH gets removed from one, H gets removed from another piece, and then they can fit together like puzzle pieces and they'll bond together well. So our glycerol loses an OH, okay? If you remember from just a few points ago, I was talking about our COOH carboxyl group. Okay, If you notice here, all I have is a COO. I don't have the H. That H was removed, and so that allows the carboxyl group to join with the glycerol group, which lost, which lost its OH. So we now have our water molecule that was formed, which allowed this to join together. So we added one fatty acid chain here, we added another fatty acid chain here, and then we added a third fatty acid chain here. So we have our glycerol, 
with our three fatty acid chains, which gives us a triglyceride. Another category of fatty acids is what's referred to as phospholipids. And we're going to talk about these big time when we talk about the cell membrane because phospholipids make up our cell membrane. A phospholipid is a glycerol molecule just like our previous one but it only has two fatty acid chains. On that third part instead of joining a fatty acid chain it's going to join what's called a phosphate group. Okay, So over here if you look we have our um, C, three C's in a row all joining on Okay, our uh, phosphate group is up here and that joins to the top piece of the um, glycerol molecule. So we have our phosphate group up here, we have our glycerol right here, so we already have something joined to this C, so now we have two fatty acid chains here, and so that's our phospholipid group. Okay, so that's our phospholipid category. We then have waxes, and waxes are going to be what's called a fatty acid chain and then an alcohol chain. So we're going to have a fatty acid chain and an alcohol chain. So this is only two. So we have our COO, our H was removed, our fatty acid chain joins on here, and then our alcohol chain, which looks very similar to a fatty acid chain, Okay, it's a long chain of carbons with lots of hydrogens, same thing, but it depends on where it's attached to and how it's attached as to if it's referred to as a fatty acid or a, um, an alcohol chain. This does not have your um, COOH group over here, the purple side, so that's your alcohol group. Because it has the COOH, this one is our, um, and our carboxyl group, this one's our fatty acid. Okay, so we have our alcohol group and our fatty acid chain, and that makes up a wax. The last type of lipid is referred to as a steroid, and a steroid is made up of actually four carbon rings, so they're a little bit different than our fatty acids. Okay, So we have four carbon rings, and then we have various functional groups that get attached to it. So if you look here, we have one, two, three, four chains, uh, four rings here. Uh, four carbon rings, and then in red, I've actually circled the, uh, the functional groups which make this estrogen. Okay, If you look down here, we have our rings, one, two, three, four for cholesterol, which are exactly the same as our rings for the estrogen. The only difference are what I've circled, which are our functional groups, which make it a different steroid. Cholesterol has these two here, which are actually the same functional groups as estrogen, the difference between estrogen and cholesterol, you have an OH group down here, and then you have this big long chain of carbons over here. And so this is cholesterol. So, in review, from this you should have understood the properties of a lipid, the structure of a lipid, the function of a lipid, and then finally the different types of lipids.